What's up, party people? This is the Nick and the Hick live. We're doing this experiment. Uh, I am Eric, also known as BD, also known as Champion Cannon, but for today, I am the Nick. And as always, I am jo joined by... Hello, everyone. I am Michael Brevard Decker, AKA Captain BD. And today I will go by the Hick. So this is episode nine, and today we're continuing our Quentin Tarantino retrospective with Inglorious Bastards. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to talk about uh, what we've played or watched. So, I mean, I would assume the biggest thing is the Avengers beta. So do you want to uh, talk uh, about that? Yeah, I can talk about it. So I... I have the Avengers, uh, Marvel Avengers beta that was this weekend, so it will be over today. It started Friday, and I started playing that at 9 o'clock um, Friday night, and I played it. I've been playing I've, – I've probably put about, I don't know, maybe five, six hours into it this weekend. I've played it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what to think about it, to be honest mm. with you. Mm. Um, the – the mechanics aren't spectacular. You know, we we played Spider-Man on PS4, and it yeah. was one of the best, probably, superhero-feeling games that have I've ever been made, really. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the other one might be like Spider-Man 2 back in the day, or like, uh, I don't know, even Marvel Avengers does okay. Or not Marvel Avengers, but Ultimate Alliance. They do okay. Yeah. They do okay. So, yeah. So it starts off with the campaign, and the campaign – it's not really even a campaign. It's like a, a, a tutorial that goes way too long. So it starts with Thor, and I don't know. You, you just throw your hammer around. They don't give you any time with Thor. Then you get like Captain America, and then you get – Captain America actually was quite a bit of fun to play because his uh, – I don't even know where to go with all this so much. So they pretty much all have about the same button layout. Like everybody has a projectile to throw. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody has a shield block where you hold this button and it blocks shields. Everybody has a strong attack. Everybody has a, 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 fat, a quick attack, you know. Um, everybody has – and those, these are all the same buttons for each character. And everybody has a, three different specials. One, you hold L1 and R1. One is just L1 and one is just R1. Um, but with Cap, what's cool with him is like with the shield, you would aim it at a person as a projectile, but it would like bounce off and hit other people. Right. So I, I did enjoy playing with him quite a bit. I didn't care for Iron Man very much, but then last night and then today I was playing a lot more with him. And um, it takes a little bit of getting used to flying him around, but I did like him. So – let me see the um, the graphics. There's nothing spectacular about the graphics at all. Oh. Um, they're not pushing the bound. It's the it's disappointing because this is one of the last games for this generation, right? Mm -hmm. So you would think that they would be pushing the boundaries, you know? And they're just they're not. the The graphics aren't comparable to Tlu at all. They're not comparable, you know, to um, Ghost. It's a ghost at all. And with Tilu, I understand that it wouldn't be comparable to that because that's a linear game and it's just focused on one or two characters at a time. Mm -hmm. But it could be comparable to like Destiny or Ghost or something like that, you know, something that's open world, something that does have a lot of characters on screen at the same time. And it doesn't come close to that. So they, they've, um, marketed this game to be like a cross between Ultimate Alliance and Destiny. So I play a bunch of Destiny and it's nothing like Destiny at all. Um, it's it's really just like a, an Ultimate Alliance with a, with, with a much bigger roof, you know? Like the, you just have more vertical movement um, and the areas are larger. But other than that, it plays just like, a, like an Ultimate Alliance 
with Destiny, dude, you get like uh, weapon drops and you get power ups and you get all types of shit all the time. Every time you kick some ass, they give you a little bit of something new. It's like this dopamine overload that Destiny gives you all the time. You're just always getting more shit, always. And this, like, you get a bunch of shit in the when you first start the game and then you buy a couple skins and you're feeling good. You're like, okay, I could see this getting loot boxing kind of cool, having some fun with it. And then it just stops. Hmm. Like no more getting any of this. You there after you beat sections, they give you shit that like, I mean, I can use them to switch, switch out some like armor pieces and shit like that here and there, but like nothing that was like actually powering me up. Right. So there's that. It's not, if it wants to be like Destiny, it has way more work to do. You know what? Anthem had the same problem too. It has way more work to do with just giving us more shit. You got to give a shit. You got to give a shit. You got to give a shit. If we go kick ass, you got to reward us. That's how we keep coming to these um, games and services. You know, it's how we keep coming back. We, we need you to hit our dopamine. Right. So the next big thing about this is I never did get into any matchmaking with another person. So everything I did was with CPUs as far as like my Avengers team. Um, on Friday night, I actually got somebody on with me, but the matchmaking and online play is so broken, dude, that I was talking to somebody. He was like, hey, are you there? I'm like, yeah, I'm here. What's up? And I could see his little banner and everything was ready to go in our little war room. And then um, he's like, dude, this is weird. Why aren't you out here? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, why aren't you out here playing with me? And I'm like, I'm in the fucking war room. I'm waiting on you. It says I'm wait. It literally says I'm waiting on you. And he was like, why are we talking to each other if I'm already in the game and you're in the fucking war room? And mind you, this was the only time I even got to talk to anybody. Right. After that, the, I just never matched made me with anybody for the next two nights. So that was pretty broken. Um, so I don't know, man. Um, the gameplay and everything, I, I'm with Dre. It's a seven, seven and a half at best. It could get better. Uh, this is a game that you'd have to play with your friends. Uh, it, it would be, it would be an absolute must that you would have to, like, if you were playing it, if Dre's playing it, if we can get Hood at playing it, and we had us a little, you know, actual little Avenger squad, then I could see myself spending sixty bucks on it. But without that, eh, I don't know. Mm. Probably not. Probably not. Um, Andre, Andre made a comment. He said that they should have never implemented a loot-based system within this game. Yeah, it would be better if so. Not not even loot, not even loot-based, but like I don't know how to put it. It's the loot drops. The that's what sucks is like when you um when you don't know what you're getting. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It would be better if they would just have, and they kind of do this, but not. it's nothing that you want. But if they could say, hey, you'll get this, this, and this if you beat this section, then that would be cool. I'd go over there, like, okay, I want these, okay, I want that. Like like when you're playing Ghost and you're taking down a farmstead or you're taking down a forge, and it actually tells you, you know, you get three silks or two golds or something right. like that, and you go from place to place to get those things. Right. That would be better. Well, this is beta. I mean, is there a chance that a lot of these things are just... Because when's the game coming out? It's next year, right? We, we found out. Established. No, just Spider-Man. This game's coming out in, a, oh, a, in like probably about a month. Christmas time? Okay. Yeah. So... Well, yeah. Right. yeah, it's... This is um, what you're going to get then, I guess. I mean, kind of. We're like we're like paid beta testers. Like, we pay right. to, to play this game. Right. Or to test the game. So I'm happy that they're getting... The, this... this game definitely should be have at least three weekends of betas like it is right um another game that i'm playing that didn't do any beta testing at least not unless you were an influential person was fall guys and that game has been broken as fuck you know what i mean like all week yeah and even shit friday i came home my wife and i were trying to play and I didn't even log on. I, I wasn't actually even able to get into a game of Fall Guys on Friday. Now, mind you, this is one week after it originally launched. Mm -hmm. um, until I got off of my Avengers stream that night. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, so, 
the man who shall not be named, also known as uh, Daniel, uh, who that? also who that also uh, agreed a solid seven. Yeah, solid seven. There's there's something there. I can't put my finger on it. There's something mm -hmm. there. I think playing with friends, it could get to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Or at least a good amount of, maybe not a lot of fun, but like a good amount of fun. It could bump it up to an eight if you're just having a good time with buddies. Right. But uh, mm -hmm. playing by yourself, it's not like playing alone and playing Destiny or playing alone and playing EOS or, you know what I mean, Warzone or something like that. It's just not the same as just hopping into that and hopefully getting with some people that know how to play. I mean, you're not going to get that same satisfaction, I don't think. Right. Did you see the article that they're going to add, or apparently they're going to be more characters? Yeah, yep. Yep, the Hawkeye. Really, yeah, uh, Hawkeye, War Machine, She-Hulk. Spider-Man. Well, Spider-Man, we know. PS4. But, but the, the other one, um, but they were just, oh, and um, not Hawkeye, it's uh, Kate Bishop, who's basically a female version of Hawkeye. Okay. She-Hulk, War Machine, and it's just basically... Uh, you know, replacements for, so it's going to be like the same kind of character, just yeah. a different, almost like a different skin, if you will. Um, well, so I don't know. Would you buy it though? If you bought it, if Andre bought it and Daniel bought it and we had our, some people in our group, you know, I mean, if we had a good amount, if we had a good people, basis, yeah. Yeah. You know, a good base of operations of Avengers to assemble here and there. I see what you did there. If it caught um, if it caught some fire and or some traction in our Discord, maybe. I don't know. That's something a big gift though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so and then you also said that you played a little bit of uh Animal Crossing. Yeah, I did I did this morning. So I just um all I did this morning I bought or I, yeah, I I forget how many I, I filled a room up in my house. I spent like four hundred yeah, it's like 400,000 on turnips. Wow. Um, wow, you're going back into that now? Well, yeah. It was Sunday, and I, my son got up early. So you need so. something to do. <laughs> need so to you spend, to need play, to spend the, some, play the game. Spend some bells. Yeah. Um, uh, but then I just went through, and I, you know what I mean? I said hi to some characters, and they were like, whoa, dude, where the fuck have you been, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bought some things in the store, bought some things, some clothes and shit, you know what I mean? And then I just hopped off. I didn't really do anything, do anything too much, in it. Yeah, you didn't do much. Um, so Andre said that uh, it's already bought the Avengers. Oh, he already bought it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got the, I've got the reservation, but I definitely haven't bought it, bought it. Um, so, yeah. So one thing I wanted to do before we talked about, oh, I'm playing Ghost. Yeah. obviously and i think we've heard enough about the game until yeah but just beats um it. where where are you are you about ready to beat it no 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 not yet are you trying to wrap up for the plat uh a little bit you know dude man you had mentioned on the last one of the last pods maybe on thursdays you talked about getting a lot of trophies for collecting all the you know all the yeah. stuff yeah dude i finished uh a few. I finished the artifacts, the Mongolian oh, artifacts. Oh wow! Did you no, get? Did you no have choices. a? Uh, really? Did you have mm -hmm. a? Did you have a? Um, I forget what the. Did you Did you look that up, or did you use your wind? No, I used the wind. Okay, you didn't use a guide. No, um, I had most of them anyway. Uh, I think I only had to have like maybe ten left. Okay. So it was it was just grinding. How many is that? Like uh, forty or fifty, isn't it? Something like that. I get, I get them confused with the. There's the artifacts. And yeah, there's, and then there's the fucking notes or whatever. I for journals. Yeah. Or so records. to be honest, I, the records. So I forget which one I did. Um, but then the other one, I think I only have like ten or eleven left. So I'll have to start banging that out eventually. Damn. What they give you like a headband? Uh, I think it was a mask. Might have been mask because I've been getting a lot of masks recently now, but. The bats. Did you get all the the hot springs? 
No, no, I haven't got, um, ooh, I've gotten ooh. two so far and, um, I, I've got all of them for act one and two and I've only made it to like two of them in act three. I don't have a lot of my act three map opened up. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have most of it, but I've liberated everything but one. Okay. Uh, see, so I've got like six one, or seven that I've liberated. There's one. So I don't know if you noticed it's an act two. I believe it was an act two. There's a town that you discover. Yeah, that takes a while, doesn't it? Because you got to talk to that chick. That's supposed yeah. to be the first one that you go to. So there's a town that you find that's, uh, you know, taken over by the Mongols, uh, and you can't actually liberate it because it's part of the storyline. So you can only liberate it during the storyline. So in Act 3, there's another town that's uh, pretty much the same thing. So that's the only thing I have left that needs to be liberated. So I started playing some of the main missions, hoping to liberate that town, uh, a village, so I could then get the whole map undone. Because the real test is going to be finding those, uh, you know, the, the, the different masks, the different... Uh, uh, sword, the sheets, pillars. whatever it's called. Yeah, the pillars. That's going to yeah. be the real test because they do show up in your uh, on your map, but they only show up if you've have seen it. Yeah, if you've opened that, if you've uh, got the fog gone. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So I'm trying. I did a little bit of uh, uh, main missions. I finished the old lady. You know, the one that raised you. Yep. Uh, and that was that was sad okay um, spoiler no no spoiler i just said sad <laughs> mean anything the game is actually just kind of getting sad altogether. yeah yeah um but yeah i, I finished uh, the artifacts or, or the records i think it was the records actually and you get nothing you get no trophies i'm like i'm like fucking 48 percent into the trophies like when does it start to pick up you know, because I'm already starting. I did all the bamboos. I did all the uh, hot springs. Did all the records. But see, the hot springs, the bam, the I know you did the like, bamboos, the hot springs. It. Yeah, they're all can, they're all in the same thing. The shrines, yeah. the yeah. foxes. I did all the foxes. God, that's a lot right there. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? Is I would discover it, but not do it, and then I would keep it going. And yeah, I've even done that when too. You discover it, it becomes you know. Uh, you take, a fast, a fast right yeah. travel. Yeah, fast so travel. I was like, I'll just go back and redo them or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm close. close. I finished uh, some of the side missions, like uh, what's her name, Yuna. Is yeah, Yuna. Right? Yeah, I finished her storyline. You know, that's the one. Her it was her son that got a her brother. Or her brother got a little ahead of himself. Very fun. <laughs> um but yeah her her uh side missions are yeah like you said they're all fucking sad they're all for the most yeah no, it, well because it's it's like everybody he talks to it's like he's literally getting torn in half every time yeah yeah because anymore in act three it seems like i've already met like two or three different samurais that are still around somehow or that they were related to a samurai that died with me when Khan came mm -hmm. around and like they're, yeah. every time they're like you're not the same person like I don't have any respect for you anymore yeah and you're like yeah. Jesus man I'm saving our island you yeah. dick you do what you gotta do alright so before we get into Glorious Bastards I did want to mention that there were a few things last week so last week we talked about music and we talked about uh, unpopular opinions and uh, I, there were a few that I wanted to mention that I just slipped my mind and forgot yep. so I just wanted to come back to that so um, I've got uh, two I've got two movie ones and okay. there's one so all right I want to look at your reaction if you have one you may not have one I do not like Chuck Norris movies what about The Way of the Dragon? Well, technically, that's not really a... That's a Bruce Lee movie. I'm I mean, with you, though. They're, they're, they're all B-movies. They're all cheesy. All of them. You know what it is? Is like, so they're all he, cheap. They're all yeah. cheap movies. He had like a resurgence, right? 
yeah. so like he'd be on t-shirts and stuff like chuck norris could do anything and what one of my favorites was uh he bit a, ra a rattlesnake and it died of poison or some you yeah. know some bullshit yeah. like that but if you sit down and you actually watch his movies his movies are fucking boring yeah no they're they're that none of them were ever like big money like they weren't ever um i forget I, I, they're just cheap they're just they're, cheaply they're, done he plays the same character yeah. in just about every movie like delta uh, force i hate delta force yeah like that's it. the thing some of the, the cable channels will do like little mini marathons and they'll play their movies so we actually sat down and watched some of them and a, a lot of the same character in in that he's a great upstanding guy yep. you know and he'll do anything for anyone and eventually his movies became texas uh, you know walk with texas ranger because he did a movie that influenced that show so he's basically just playing the same character from all his movies yeah those old movies in like the 80s and early 90s like those are you're right it's like watching the same movie it is it's like watch it like you said um delta force invasion usa uh, we've watched Delta Force two. Then he do uh, something ninja too, like something with ninja in the title. Yeah, I, I thought maybe that wasn't him. I, mean, I was thinking American Ninja, but that wasn't him. Um, he played. I mean, it's just like everything's just boring. It's yeah. really boring. Low it's budget. One note. It's one note. Uh, low budget and just everything's really cheap. And he tried to compete. What was on recently was. Uh, a movie he did called Firewalker, yeah. which is an Indiana Jones ripoff. And that's that's another thing is he tried to rip off a lot of movies or actors who were popular at the time. And it's just it's like Jean Claude Van Damme movies are cheesy, but they're kind of fun. You know, they're yeah. fun in a way. And I feel like Chuck Norris always had a line that he wouldn't cross. And because he wouldn't cross that line, they were boring. Yep. Um so yeah, that's that's mine, and uh, I want to hear your, your unpopular opinion about music. Oh, uh, with told music, me. yeah. Um, all right. So growing up, my dad, so my dad's side of the family, were all very musically inclined, right? Every mm -hmm. single one of the Deckers, we all play an instrument, Ooh. and myself included. Nice. And he was a big trumpet guy. He got into IU on a um, jazz. Um, on a, I don't know, he, get, he was joining the jazz band. That's how he got in. And then my grandmother was a music teacher at um, an elementary school um, here in town. And then my grandfather, they, he met her at college in music class. And then my great uncle taught um, Dave Letterman how to play the trombone in Broad Ripple. He was their um, band instructor for brought her up high school at the time so big music family and my dad used to get really upset with me about this all the time because he actually saw this guy's last concert in indianapolis oh um but i would tell him that i really believe that elvis sucked <laughs> <laughs> and i still do yeah um, was the was the concert called Fat and Bloated? Yeah, seventy nine, Fat and Bloated. Which is the same thing, but um, yeah, I'm not a big Elvis fan uh, either. Uh, yes, I just think that there was so much more music around that time. Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, she shut the door. Never mind. I thought that there was. I still think that there's just so much better music uh, that influenced him. And that was around while he was, oh, yeah. while he was playing so much better music. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I love Buddy Holly. I love um, mm -hmm. Richie Valance. I love Chuck Berry. Um, yeah. They're all way better. Like it's not even close in my opinion. Oh, definitely. And then if you go through the sixties and through the seventies, it's like, come on, not even, you could, you could start naming bands that were, that were more talented um easily i mean it would, it would be more it would be difficult to not come up with an absurd um, amount of bands you know that were better than elvis oh definitely and then you just hear stories about how just crazy he was you know yeah 
among <laughs> other things, among other things. You know, you definitely married, what, like a young 12, 14, somewhere in yeah. there. We don't somewhere really know, there. do we? Yeah. No. Um, heavy, I mean, that's why he died. Heavy drug user his yes. whole life. Yep. Started fights with people because he knew karate. He was a karate guy. Mm. Quote, unquote, yeah. Would shoot TVs and shit because he didn't like what was on it or something like that in his house. I mean, dude. he was, yeah, it was, um, not Robert, uh, yeah, Robert Goulet. He was jealous, he was jealous of Robert Goulet. So I just, uh, just, I never have been a fan, dude. Never have been a fan of King yeah. Rock. Mm. Self proclaimed. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that. Pretty much everything. I mean, also, I think he was a racist. And yeah, a thief. He, oh, yeah. I was going to say, he was definitely a thief. Definitely. Um, yeah, I don't really know how often he talked about his influences, you know, and, and if he named names, because I think people like that want to make it sound like everything they do is original, which is not necessarily true. I mean, he stole his dance from Forrest Gump. Never gave him credit, you know? Never. So, no. Um, so speaking of Forrest Gump, actually, uh, this is a segue, which I did not mean for it to be a segue. Uh, my other unpopular opinion is Robert Zemeckis, the director, is a hack. Okay. And past 1980, well, past like uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he has not made a decent movie, in my opinion, since uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, what what the fuck were we we were just oh um, we're not actually thinking about Castaway. A Castaway is boring. Yeah, I like Castaway. No, it's a it's a one one timer. It's annoying. It's boring. Um, what else? Uh, even Forrest Gump. I mean, Forrest Gump. I think is a little outdated. Contact. Nah, it's okay. Beowulf. No. None of the CGI movies, dude. None of the CGI movies. Okay, they now this so this, hard with that. This well, gets Lawrence into Lee's where Lawrence. this gets into where it's probably not a good movie, and it probably just hits nostalgia for me. But the witches. Okay. Uh, the frighteners, dude. That was Michael J. Fox's All right, last. That, I mean, you movie. know what? All right, that. But see, I've always said this. I say it once. I say it before. That everyone has at least one good movie. Uh, he had a few good hits in a row, and then he just slumped. The Frighteners is a great movie, but it didn't really do that well. Hey, that's uh, it didn't do that well, and that's when you could start seeing. Sorry oh, actually, to interrupt you, by the way. That's when you could start seeing Michael J. Fox. Kind of, you can actually start seeing it. His Parkinson's, you know. Yeah, um, but that's one of those movies, dude. That the special effects still kind of hold up. They do, um, but I just realized uh, that's uh, it's Peter Jackson. Okay, that's not him. Yeah, Zemeckis uh, produced it. Okay. And yes, the CG, the, the special effects do definitely hold up. Uh, he tried to do the CGI crap. You know, the Beowulf, Christmas Carol, Mars Needs Moms. I know I'm missing one. So yeah, I'm, did well. I'm looking at, I, I was just looking at the list of his movies, and you're right, that's... Not a whole lot, um, and no. a lot of them I do like, but I like them because I was a kid and I used to just love watching them. Well, like what? Like what is there? Death Becomes um... Her. Yeah, the movie's not that great, though. It's not that great, but back then I loved watching that yeah, shit. Stomach no, I, and blown out but by a shotgun. Yeah, I did. But a lot of his movies are very uh, special effects heavy. Yeah. You know, when the contact's not a bad movie, but um, some of those movies aren't really considered like classics yeah. or they didn't really do they didn't really make a lot of money um so yeah it's just like uh, you know he had i mean fuck dude back to the future back to the future 2 the whole trilogy and who framed roger rabbit are considered classics those are like considered great movies but and you don't like his uh indiana jones wannabes which one was that the romancing the stones oh yeah 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 well, that was before. That's still, that's still, yeah. And that, that's like one of those where a lot of people don't even realize he directed that. Um, all right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, anything else? So you don't like, you 
But the whole point, I think, that we're straying away is that you don't like Forrest Gump. It's not that I don't like it. I just feel like it's outdated. Now, that's a movie where the CGI has not held up. Yeah. Um, and that movie beat out Pulp Fiction for Best Picture. Yeah. So when I was a kid, all right, and I'm watching that, you, it's, it's, it's way different how it hits you when you're a kid and when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. With Ginny. When she mm -hmm. dies and he has to I, – I cried when I was a kid. Oh, of course, yeah. And now uh, as an adult, I'm like, nah, man, fuck her. Like, you'll be better, bro. Like, exactly. you'll be, you're better off, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting when the movie came out and it was, like, being uh, promoted. Like, they never really talked about what it was about. Uh, I kept thinking, like, but what is this fucking movie about? Because it's kind of hard to – uh, describe and explain and and that's just what it is it's just like what the fuck is this movie about you know a sim uh, the history of the world in the eyes of a simpleton you yep. know yep. who had great influence yeah amazing influence um, and it's just like that whole part where he runs I just never understood it he just <laughs> stops like why I think I'm I done know. running <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I love it. Um, I love I love Forrest Gump, man. I love it. Yeah, but dude, it beat Pulp Fiction. And I think know. about that. I know. You know, like no, I mean we're literally still talking about Pulp like we did a whole fucking pod but there was on Pulp Fiction. Two. There was a time when um Tom Hanks just couldn't be touched though. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I still think you can't. You know, even though he just keeps doing uh, biopic movies now. <laughs> yeah, and horrible movies. Look what? Um, recently, what's horrible? Uh, the Cloud Atlas. Oh, that. Yeah, that's. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? I I haven't seen that Nixon one yet, so I can't comment on that. The post. The post. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen that. There's another one too. He just, I don't know. He does Not a great lot of bio, bio stuff. Yeah, like there. flight or what's his name, Sonny or who's the pilot? Oh, um, um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. He, speaking of which, uh, you had mentioned uh, Zemeckis did flight with that with Denzel. Washington. It's like which the same did, movie, right? Yeah, I did not care for that because. Uh, because it was just basically an analogy for, like, religion. Yeah, so what was the difference? Didn't Denzel play a drunk guy that landed it? He played and, a and... drunk guy, yeah. He played a drunk. And Sully. Then... My, my wife just Sully. Uh, told that me was, Sully. That was Hanks, Hanks did Sully. And yeah. Sully was the, the true story where dude landed yeah, the on the Hudson, story, yeah. right? But, but everyone said about that, the problem with that movie was, you know, he was a great pilot and he did something great and that's it. Like, he wasn't like he had skeletons in the closet. You know, it wasn't like he turned out to be a mass murderer or any of that shit. It or a just, drunk. Or drunk. He just, he did a great job. He did what he was supposed to do. And that's it. And they said it really wasn't a two-hour movie. But with uh, Denzel, he was a coke addict and he was drunk. And yeah. he did something. He turned, he like flew the plane upside down. And it ended up saving everybody. But then they found found out that he was an a, you know an addict, and he was high, and so there's a whole thing. But it's just like, you know, so he has this moral crossroads where he has to lie or tell the truth and get in trouble, and whatever. It was kind of boring. But that's the mechanism, baby. Um, what? Up? I was thinking. There's you're right. Hanks hasn't done too bad. What was the one with uh, the pirates? Uh, Cap Captain, Captain Phillips. Yeah. Captain Phillips. That was pretty good. It wasn't yeah. bad. It's pretty good. But again, like I said, he uh, he's doing a lot of bios. Um, all right. So uh, before we get to the main event, I just wanted to say that last week we were talking about music, and I forgot to mention the yeah, your, your uh, genres. The genres that I so I like. Um, I mostly like alternative music. I like alternative music from the 80s and the 90s so like uh the uh the 80s like the cure smiths and patch mode which is like the trinity 
of 80s alternative or like mm-hmm. 90s alternative that you had mentioned grunge rock which is big on that um i'm big into like punk like old punk and some metal and yeah that's pretty much what I, and indie rock which i talked about for a long time so yeah it's pretty much what i listen to so are you more like um are you more like into like the Ramones and like the East yeah. Coast stuff or yeah. um, um, like no effects and like the Cali you know, stuff? That's more 90s. So I'm more into the early, the, like the first wave, I guess you can call it. 70, okay. uh, sex yeah, Pistols. Ramones. Yeah, Ramones. little Sex Pistols. They're, they're pretty much, um, what's it called? A, uh, a created band, yeah. you know. But the Ramones um, and uh, the Misfits and stuff like that who's the guy that did um the are the they did all of the basketball diaries music uh like jim carroll you mean yeah or? jim carroll i like jim carroll yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of punky right him, yeah 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 he's really punk yeah yeah i like the song they all died he's, yeah all my friends died he's, he's he was from new york um well yeah i mean it's about his life so yeah uh, yeah, so let's get into the main event and Glorious Bastards, which, by the way, is the title is misspelled. Yep, yep, purposely. Purposely, because it's uh, what? Why is that? I meant to look that up. There's an but original. You know There's another movie called yeah. The Glorious Bastards, and that's with an A. Yeah, I would Correct. imagine that's the reason. Yeah, and then, I believe that's an Italian movie, which really has nothing to do with this movie, but just i mean that's what uh Quentin does you know uh so this is 2009 uh this is uh about world war ii so it's about a lot of people actually um right off the bat how do you feel about this movie um maybe my favorite really dude when we get it when we get to the point i was i watched this with my wife and she was like this is my favorite Brad Pitt movie, I think. And then Ooh, like okay. about 10 minutes went through and I'm like, you know, you're not wrong. Like <clears> you're, <throat> he is, he, it's, it's up there, dude. It's, it's, okay. uh, I feel great about Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like a lot of his movies, uh, you know, going over his movies, I realize that he does the chapters a lot. Mm hmm. And so he does that again in this one. Um, so it starts off with the bastards who aren't. No, actually, uh, I'm. Uh, let me yeah, start that. Starts, uh, start off, that. starts off in 1941. It starts off with uh, Hans Landa, who is a SS. I guess I don't know what is his. Uh, I don't he's know what is. He's the Jew hunter. But no, yeah, he's a colonel. Well, he's, he's a colonel. Okay, so he's a colonel, and he goes to a French dairy farm, and he's looking for Jews that are being hid. Mm-hmm. And he speaks to the the, the head da- dairy farmer. Look at this amazing like uh, monologue, and you know this is the movie that introduced us to Christoph Waltz, who was a star in Germany, but this is his first American movie. And, you know, right off the bat, we see why he won. He eventually would win two. the Academy Award. Two, yeah, because he's fucking it. Twice. A, the problem is he's a great actor, but the only good movies he's in are Quentin Tarantino movies. Yes. yes. But he's amazing in the scene. In this, in this movie, doesn't he just have you torn like, like you hate him and you love him? I mean, like... I think you, you're supposed to love to hate him. Um, and he does something later on in the movie that really just pushes you to the edge to hate him. Um, but yeah, at this point, you're, I think at this point, you're really more intrigued by him because he's not, um, I mean, he even says he's not like the atypical Nazi soldier, you know, because he knows how to think like the Jew. He knows mm-hmm. where to look for them. And you get the sense that, you know, lack of a better word, he's probably smarter than the uh, typical German soldier or Nazi soldier. So he has this conversation uh, and he's speaking in English eventually. I love, I gotta stop you, I love that. The very first time I saw this movie, 
they're speaking in French, they're speaking in German, and I'm like, oh, damn it, I got to read this shit. And he's, then he just stops with me. He's like, hey, you speak English? He's like, yeah, I speak English. He was like, okay, well, and then he just stops. He's like, can we switch? And they're like, yeah. So I'm like, oh, that was yeah. excellent, Quentin. Not, well done. <laughs> and, and I'll get into that later. Why? I, I mean, I like that as well, but there's, there's like a reason why I like it. I'll get into that in a little bit. So they have this conversation, and he's obviously looking, looking for the Jews who are being hidden and these are the, uh, the farmer's neighbors. And so, I mean, we later realize why he's speaking in English because he knows that the, the Jews that are hiding can't speak it. And there is this great scene where the farmer says, oh, can I, you know, do you mind if I smoke my pipe? And he's like, sure. And then he pulls out his pipe and then, you know, uh, Land is like, do you mind if I smoke my pipe? He's like, sure. And then he pulls out a bigger pipe you know, and it's it's like this nice little... It's, it's a ridiculous pipe. It is a ridiculous pipe, but it's almost like my dick is bigger than yours kind of thing. So eventually the dairy farmer gives up the Jews because he's kind of forced to. And, you know, he's, his daughters are outside with Nazi soldiers alone. Yeah. And like the whole time, I'm like, what the fuck is going on out there? Because if I was the daughter, I'd be shitting my leader hose in. Oh, no, they're French. Yeah. Uh, shitting my, uh, my French equivalent to leader hose in to, you know, like, what are these fucking Nazi soldiers going to do to my father? What are they going to do to us, you know? Um, but eventually, the dairy farmer gives up, and uh, Lando tells the soldiers to shoot the floor, and then... Everyone essentially dies except for one girl, and she runs out, and he knows that's uh, Shoshana, and he yells, you know, the daughter of the family that he was looking for, and then he screams out her name. He, he like, goes to shoot at her, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's always been a question in, in, between my wife and I, like, why does he let her go? And, I mean, I, I think she was out of range. But they still could have tried to get her. You know, they had a car. Uh, so I think that it was the love of the hunt. For, Maybe, uh, yeah. For Linda. Um, and, you know, also she's a teenage girl. Like, how much trouble can she really cause? If you only knew, you know. Um, but then uh, au revoir, Shoshana. And then that's the end of the first chapter. And then that's when we meet the bastards. Yes. And then your boy uh, Pitt comes out. And he starts telling his uh, group of soldiers who are Jewish Americans that they're going to be hunting Nazis, which is like the flip side of what Landa does, right? Yeah. Um, and he's like, uh, this great speech, another great speech. Like, we just, we just left the one great speech, and now we're into another great speech. And how he wants his Nazi, he's going to scalp Nazis. Yeah, and he wants 100 Every, each person, owes each him person has to friggin' scalp this fucking. Um, and then at, at that, we get a look at some of the bastards, and then a good eye will will show. You know, a good eye will see that B.J. Novak from the office is one of the bastards, um, who barely gets any lines. But I have a question about the bastards, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that towards the end. So we get a little bit of what the bastards are gonna do which is just go through Germany-occupied areas and just... Kill Nazis. Kill and stout Nazis. Uh, so let's see. So then, is that then when we get the... Um... Fassbender, I think, right? No. Not yet. No, not yet. No, nope. uh, we get her at the... We get Shoshana. No, no, not yet, because we still got... Um... Wait, isn't that when they show you a bit of the not the bastards, the whole thing where they... You know, it's um, oh, so he says, No, it goes want, to Hitler. Yeah, he says, I want my scalps, and then it's a quick cut to Hitler. Yep, who's I thought that the actor did a great job. I think a Was lot Hitler? of people, yeah, I think so too. A lot of people thought that he overacted, but um, I think that was kind of the point, you know. Um, but anyway, he's screaming in German and. He's being told that there's a survivor. <laughs> Butts. Yeah. Yeah. There's a survivor of uh, a recent inglorious bastards attack. I and mean, then we bring in this uh, private, and then the private kind of tells the story of what happened. And he reveals that 
he's been given a swastika scar on his forehead. Yeah. I don't know if that happens in the, but we eventually see that. So this is uh, one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Yes. And there are a lot of good scenes, but we kind of see the bastards in uh, action. And so they have, uh, they've ambushed a group of Germans and uh, Brad Pitt, Lieutenant Aldo, is interrogating the lead German and he wants him to tell him where his like, where the, the guns are, you know, like where people are hiding, Nazi soldiers are hiding so they don't get ambushed. So the bastards don't get ambushed. And then of course he's not going to give it. But now, Brad, Brad Pitt's like little quips that fucking Tarantino gives him yes. during, during this is yes. just gold. When he's like, you put your little wiener schnitzels on the map right here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and he, he fires off like five or six of those. He like, does. The writing for Pitt is amazing for the yeah. scene. And I, I love the way he says Nazis. Nazis. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, one of, so then we, we get introduced to one of my favorite characters of the entire movie. And that is Hugo Stiglitz. <laughs> and he, you know, Aldo says to the German soldier, oh, maybe you've heard of, you know, maybe you know of your ex-compatriot, uh, uh, Hugo Stieglitz. And one of my favorite lines, everyone in the Nazi army has heard of Hugo Stieglitz. Like, it's just so much venom behind it. And then we get to see a little bit of Hugo. And then, of course, we get our Samuel L. Jackson appearance. A couple of times. Yeah, well, the first time is his voiceover talking yep. about Hugo Stieglitz, who, um, how many did he fucking, he killed like nine Gestapos? Or was it 13? I might have been 13. You might be right with the 13. Maybe nine or, I don't know, one of those two. But we get, um, so he's, a, he's a, a German who's kind of forced to be in the Nazi army, and then he def uh, defects by murdering, 13 Gestapos, and one of them, he fucking just starts shoving his hand yeah. down the guy's throat. That would hurt so bad. Yeah, so like bad. your hand. That would hurt yeah. your hand. Yeah, exactly. And then the other one is he puts the pillow over the guy's face and just starts stabbing Stab him. <laughs> I love you because he lives. And one of my favorite scenes is when he's in the jail, and then the bastards come and rescue him, but that involves, like, a grenade and like tons of uh, gunfire and Hugo Stieglitz doesn't even move an inch. He's just smoking his cigarette as slowly as he can. And, you know, Aldo breaks him out and Aldo's like, uh, we love your work. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're big he's, fans. We're big fans. Like, you're, like he's a fucking artist. And um, he like bows his head like, thank you. <laughs> he barely says a word. He doesn't say anything until, yeah. like, until later on. But no, he's like, he said, uh, right now your status at Nazi Killen's amateur. How'd you like to go pro? Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I love you, Bill Steven. So. Uh, so then that's like the little cutaway, just briefly talking about. And I love the graphic that they use, the font, to show his name because it's yeah, like and the 70s. And that guitar lick, the da -da. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so then we get back to trying to get him to get the information from the German soldier. German soldiers, uh, they're in an impasse because the German soldier won't say anything. So then that's when Aldo says that you have to meet. Uh, what's his name? Uh, bear the bear Jew. Yeah. Uh, the bear. Uh, he said, you heard about the bear Jew, right? And he says, yeah, he beats his, his, uh, he beats people at the club. And he says, no, what he does is he beats, he bashes the shit out of people's heads in with a baseball bat. Yeah. <laughs> so we, now this is one of my problems I have with the movie, uh, which is very few. So we get an introduction to the bear Juden. And it's this slow knock, you know, with the with the bat, and he comes down this tunnel, and it's just I know it's supposed to build up this suspense for you and for the German soldier, but it just for me it takes a little bit too long, you know. It's just like knock, 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 uh, and then he finally comes out, and everyone applauds because the one problem that Quentin Tarantino has is he doesn't know how to edit, um, and I think this is where that shows. More, more than not, is that 
just all right, come out already. But it's it's almost supposed to be like he's a boxer or you know an athlete that builds before you actually see him come out. So that's a great scene. Although Eli Roth plays the bear Jew, who's uh, a movie director, not much of an actor. No, he's not. So, and this this is where he's not that much of an actor. Uh, and yeah. this is what I don't like. I I do like the scene of him coming up through the tunnel and the slow knocking, and then him. Yeah. Have holding his bat on him, and he's like, "Yeah." So you, how, you get this, get this from killing Jews, Jews, you know what I mean? And then just pow, just starts beating the shit out of him. But then his voice yeah. immediately after goes like two octaves up, and he's like, "All right, boys, blah yeah. blah blah, it's out of here, Fenway yeah, Park, yeah. baby," you know? Yeah, he like pretends to be yeah. Uh, and then he's like, "Next guy, batter up, next on deck." I hit you, you hit the ground. And I was like, yeah. I was like, well, that's not as scary. No. And then the one guy runs, like he's like you, and the one guy runs, and they shoot him in the back, and then um, they get they get the third guy, the, the private butts, and then yeah. he just gives it up real quick. Yeah, real quick. His finger went <laughs> straight to it. Quick. Yeah. Um, but I love the. The the swastika, you know, um, carving in the art in the head because you know uh, Aldo's frame of mind is that you know you're gonna get out of this, you'll be alive, but we need you to send a message, and what better way to send a message than a fucking scar on your goddamn forehead where everyone can see? So when we get back to Private Butts, we see the swastika. And Hitler tells him not to tell anyone about, you know, most of the, uh, the story. You know, of course, Butts leaves out the part of the story to Hitler that he quickly gave everything away. Yeah, you know? Everything. Yeah, because he didn't want to get hit in the fucking head of the baseball bat. Um, but, yeah, I just think that Eli Roth is overacts. And, you know, he's really good friends with Quentin Tarantino, so that's obviously the reason why he was in the movie. Uh, and I think in real life he is from the Boston area, but his accent was just, like, over the top. Um, but then we see, after that, we see Shoshana, and it's like, uh, you know, a few years after the very first scene, and she's living in Paris, and she has a cinema, a movie theater, and there's a German soldier who comes up to her while she's changing the marquee, and, you know, he tries to have, like, this friendly conversation with her, but she's French, living in occupied France, Nazi-occupied France. And she's also, you know, the girl from the beginning, so she's kind of not too keen on Nazis. But this guy is in love with her, essentially. Now, you talk about um, Hans Landa feeling sorry for him. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone in this movie up to a point that you feel sorry for, it's uh, this German uh, soldier uh, Frederick uh, Zeller or Zeller? Zeller. You, Zeller. you do feel sorry for him? Uh, at, at first, yes. Because he's, you know, he, you don't really get the sense that he's pro-Nazi. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there was this uh, kind of consensus where a lot of Nazi soldiers were just like, well, I was just doing what I was told. And he never says anything anti-Semitic. He never says anything racist. He's just a guy who's in love with this girl. And what's great about the framing device for this is you take him, take the Nazi out, right? This yeah. would be this would be a romance movie. This would yeah. be a romance movie in the '60s. You know, that's it's like uh, he sweeps her off her feet. You know, they they share a love for movies or cinema, and eventually they get together and they get married. But uh, that's not going to happen. You know, and added to the fact that we find out Shoshana is actually dating uh, a black guy who's working at the theater as well. Prince. Well, and, and we can't forget the fact that he also um, caused a major rift in between, you know, Captain America and Iron Man. Exactly. You will never be forgiven for that. Um, just like I'll never forgive Elvis for not giving Forrest Gump the, uh, the credit he so, so <laughs> deserved. So, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's a, he's kind of a dope, Frederick, but he is just like, 
in love and doesn't really see reality, I guess. Um, well, there's a lot that he doesn't know. He doesn't know that she's Jewish. No, but I mean, still the fact that you're a Nazi soldier in occupied France and you're trying to get with a French girl, like, they, you know, unless she's hot to trot or, or whatever, you're probably not going to get her, you know, because they don't really like you. Like, yeah. he doesn't seem to understand you're a friggin' Nazi and uh, you're not really well liked uh, outside of Germany. But in this movie, though, they, they have chicks with Nazi soldiers. Like, it's like these French women with Nazi soldiers. Like it's Yeah, the, I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Like, it's, it's just, the cool thing to do. Right. But you, you have to understand that as a Nazi soldier, there are going to be people who uh, don't agree with you being there. Um, and it's just, I guess, it's this egotism of him. And also then we find out that he's a uh, celebrity, I guess you could say, within the Nazi army, is that... Uh, he is a sniper. He's a war hero. War hero, yeah, who killed 250 Allied soldiers in one single battle. Uh, and then so he gets like, it's like he gets a little embarrassed by it too. You know, mm -hmm. when he's still a private, I mean, the least they could do is give him a fucking higher rank, you know? You know he's uh, selling some bonds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so he reveals that they made a movie about his, you know, his uh, event or what he did. And he's in Paris to what? Like they're supposed to look for a movie a venue, theater, yeah. a venue. And he really wants to get with Shoshana. So he tries to sweeten the pot by telling her, hey, we'll have the premiere at your theater. I'll just tell my boy, you know, Goebbels, uh, who directed it, that we could go. And then she's, you know, like, that's what she really wants, right? Like uh, 300 Nazis at a fucking theater. So, but again, it's, it's clever because it's the framing. You know, if this wasn't 1944, they would have gotten together most likely. You know? I don't know. She liked, uh, she liked the brothers though. What brothers? Uh, she likes, she likes black people. She likes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I don't think, I don't think but he I was, mean... I don't think even without him being a Nazi, I don't think he was her type. No, but the, uh, the point of their storyline is yeah. supposed to be, you know, take away the Nazis, take away the her boyfriend. You know, if this was just like a typical, like you look at Lifetime movies, right? You look at, look at Lifetime romance movies. It's like it always starts off with two people who don't like each other who then end up falling in love. That's always the formula for those movies. And so you take away the, the Nazis or you take away the black guy, and that's what it would have been. It would have been like, oh, look at this egotistical asshole. And then in the end, they're in love. But it's just because different time and different situation. So anyway, um, so then that's when we meet. Uh, oh, and she meets. So she goes and she, because he, what's it called? She, like the fucking Nazi comes to pick her up. Yeah. Right in the car. That dude's and, scary. Yeah, he is scary. And we see him a little bit later in the movie. Um, but so they go to a restaurant, and that's where uh, Go Goebbels, uh, what's his name? Goebel. Goebbels is, and his uh, French interpreter, where for once, for some reason, we have to see a quick scene of him. What was the her. point of that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's so bored. Like, is that <laughs> supposed to be, it's like, it's almost like a character assassination is like, you're supposed to see not only a Nazi, but he's boring in bed too. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, we saw that he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife, I'm watching this there. with my wife and she's like, why did we, why, what was that for? And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, it's fucking Tarantino. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so then uh, Shoshana meets him and, you know, we find out that they're going to do the premiere at his theater. And then Shoshana uh, meets the head of security, which is dun, 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 Hans Landa, who is the very man who killed her family. And so that is a very intense moment. It is, the whole she, time. Yeah, he like puts his hand on her and then everyone else leaves and he has like a conversation with her to talk about the theater. And she's just like trying to keep her cool. And there's the scene where he orders strudel, uh, no, it's not strudel. It's a it's strudel. It's, it's a strudel. strudel. Okay, strudel. so it's strudel, and there's whipped cream on top. 
and they're eating it. He eats it. He talks about how great it is and all that junk. And then before he was, so he lights the cigarette, lights the cigarette. And before he leaves, he puts the cigarette in the cream, yep. which is symbolic because her family were uh, dairy farmers. Dairy farmers. So yeah, it's supposed to be that. Like, and he ordered her milk. Right. So the whole time you're thinking like, does he know? Does he remember her? Um, but it doesn't seem like he does. But you're on the edge of your seat in that scene, just like she is. Because when, when he finally leaves, she just like has this, what's the word? Like just a gasp. Of, oh, yeah. She's terror. Re- relief, terror and relief. Yeah, like how the fuck am I going to deal with this shit? Um, so, yeah, then, then we see Archie Hickox played mm-hmm. by... Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. Magneto. Magneto. Um, and so Austin Powers. Uh, yeah. All right. So now this is. I'm gonna get to what. I'm gonna get to what I was gonna say before. And one of the reasons why I love this movie. So you know how there's a lot of um, English, uh, British actors doing American accents, or American actors doing British accents. Mm-hmm. So this entire movie, all of these characters, especially the characters who are bilingual, are all we're all casted by people who are actually bilingual. So Hickox is supposed to be a British guy who was born in Germany. And so he can speak both English and German. And Michael Fassbender was born in Germany and is a Brit who can speak both both languages. Uh, Landa, uh, played by, uh, what's his name? Um, Christoph Waltz, but Christoph he, Waltz. he speaks all kinds of languages right. in this movie. He speaks so in Italian, the he speaks um, French, he speaks obviously German, he speaks English, and he speaks Italian, which he really does in real life. Um, even Shoshana, both speaking English and French. Um, the woman that uh, that uh, Goebbels is uh, fucking, yes. the interpreter, she was in uh, Kill Bill. And also... She speaks English, French, and German. So, like, all these actors can actually speak the languages their characters can. So I thought that was really interesting. But then we come to the anomaly, and this is where we come to the anomaly. Who's playing the British uh, Prime Minister? Our... Who's, no, not the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister uh, was, played by, was played by a Brit. But who's playing the guy who's giving... Uh, Hickox, the mission briefing. Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike Myers. Mike Myers. And a lot of people thought he did a horrible British accent. And he's the only one in the movie who's not who the character is, you know? Yeah. And it, it's possible that Tarantino wrote that beforehand or during the movie, he was just like, I'm going to rewrite this as Hickox was born in Germany because Michael Fassbender was born in Germany. Oh, whatever. But the point is, is like everything fits. Like everyone fits except for Mike Myers. Uh, but Mike you... Myers had already done, what, 12 years of a shitty British accent before that? Right. It's a different, I mean, if you want to, uh, if you want to like argue, it's a different kind of accent, but it's still, what do you think of it? I thought it was funny. Like, um, I liked Pete kept calling, oh, chap, I, I had a boy. You did, you right. You did. Uh, so he does the, the mission briefing for Hickox and recruits him to lead Operation Kino. <laughs> so stupid. And uh, he's supposed to be the British uh, help. He's supposed to help the bastards. Um, so as he's, he's just briefing him, he has to like pretend to be, you know, they find out that they're going to do this movie premiere. And that's where he wants Hickox and the bastards to go. Uh, and Hickox did a little film, um, re- you know, what's it called? Review. His review, yeah. yeah. Critic. And so he asks some questions about movies to see if he's got, uh, you know, the, uh, the stuff to pretend to be uh, a German reviewer. And um, and then of course there's a guy in the back just smoking a cigar, which you would think Hickox would know who that was, you know, because the whole time we're kind of like not really sure who he is, just some fat guy smoking a cigar in the back, and of course it ends up being Churchill. And I've said this to you before, uh, Tarantino likes to cast older, you know, like actors he grew up watching. Mm-hmm. And so that was uh, 
an old actor named Rod Taylor who was in The Birds. Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever watched The Birds, and uh, an old sci-fi movie called The Time Machine. So even like watching the movie, I was like, God, Rod Taylor, I didn't even know. And it wasn't until years later that I found out, and it's like, God, Rod Taylor looks terrible. It, it is speaks, a, speaks two words. Yeah, what is it? Uh, brief him. Brief him, yeah. Um, so yeah, so then he's supposed to meet up with the bastards, and uh, and then where are we? Oh wait, he says that there's a German actress who's working as a double agent, and so that's their in. That's the the person that they have to meet. Um, what the hell's her name? I don't know. Hammer, Hammersfeld. Hammers. Hammersfeld. Hammers. Hammer something. So they're supposed to go to a, a tavern uh, to meet Bridget von Hammersmark. And um, uh, there's a scene where before they do that, because they get there and they find out that the bar is underground. So yeah, like but no it's, it's funny talking or listening to Brad Pitt um, discuss with Archie about how poor this location is yeah. before they're actually in there. Yeah. And he's like, well, she's not a soldier. And he's like, you don't have to be a fucking war hero to realize you don't want to fight in a goddamn basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pitt really brings it in this, and his accent's fucking hilarious. Oh, it's so horrible. It's, yeah. it's, so, it's so horrible. It's great. Yeah. Um, there's this great scene where, you know, Hugo Stiegler is supposed to pretend to be a soldier, which, again, if, if you have the most infamous man in... They would you probably know, know what he looks like. Yeah, they would know what he looks like, especially soldiers. He's been like jailed. Officers would know, yeah. They were going to kill him. I'm a Gestapo. Uh, good. I was a Gestapo. If I'm a Gestapo, I'm going to know what this motherfucker looks like. Yeah. Because he's killed 13 of us already. He was he was on military death row, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was getting yeah. killed that next day. And the, the guy even said, everyone in the German army knows who Hugo Stiegel is, so... So let's put him in the outfit that we would recognize him in. <laughs> exactly. So, but there's this great scene where he's, uh, uh, his blade, his knife, he's like sharpening it. And he just keeps sharpening it and sharpening it. And Archie comes to him and says, I need you to be calm. calm. And he's like, you know, it's like Hannibal Lecter. Like his fucking blood pressure doesn't go up. You know, and this, he's just so calm. And he just says, stops. And he looks at him and goes, I don't look calm to you. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? You're right. Carry on. <laughs> he looked like the most calm person I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, so they get to the fucking bar and the tavern. And, of course, uh, Bridget von Hammersmark is hanging out with other German sh soldiers. Who now, what was, what was the reasoning that, that this bar was chosen? Fuck, I can't remember. There weren't um, supposed to be any Germans there. Right, right. There weren't supposed to be any soldiers, but it was just like riddled with soldiers. And there's a bunch of soldiers like having a party because one of them just, uh, one of whom's wife just plopped out a baby. So, um, so then, I mean, this is a long scene. Yes. This is a big chunk of the movie. Um, and we've already had a bunch of long scenes. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I think this just goes on a little bit too long. Uh, there's a game being played uh, by the soldiers, and then Archie and Hugo Stieglitz and one of the other bastards go, and I don't know, it's just a long exchange, and then they start to talk, and then of course that uh, one Gestapo is there. I think he's a Gestapo, the guy that we so seen earlier. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Archie was just a dick this whole time. Yeah. You think it was just because dude spilt a, that beer on him? That, that just... He had um, a stein and he uh, Wilhelm. Wilhelm yeah. was, had a, he was drunk as shit, had a stein, and he sp spilled beer on Archie. I think so. And then I after mean, that, Archie was just a dick the whole time. Like, yeah. A lot of this probably wouldn't have happened if he just... If he kept calm. Well, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, he spills a beer, and of course those soldiers are like a lower rank than what Archie is pretending to be, so he kind of pulls rank. And then that's when we find out there's someone hiding in the back of the bar, and it's the soldier that grabbed 
Shoshana earlier in the movie to bring her to the restaurant. Told her to get her ass in the car. Yeah, which you had said was a scary dude. She is. is. He is. And then he outranks the fake ranks that Archie has. So then he comes over and then they start talking. And so you you said that Archie, you know, if Archie played it's cool, you, this probably would have, and that's isn't that the irony? Is that he told you know, Steve yeah. Liz to calm, and then he's not calm, and then this happens, and then he makes mistake number two, which we don't really know yet. But he does something that the one Kasapa is kind of like, these guys are weird, and then another Tarantino, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but something that Tarantino does often, Mexican standoff, but in this version with testicles. Yes. Uh, so we see that he's got a gun cocked on Archie, but then what he doesn't know is Archie's got his gun cocked on him, and Hugo Stieglitz got his gun cocked on him. So this Gestapo thinks that he had the upper hand, but it turns out he doesn't. Uh, and then, you know, Archie goes through this whole fucking monologue that I don't even really remember but there's one scene where he's smoking the cigarette and you could see the smoke go into his eye I don't know if you ever noticed that uh-huh. and then he, and then he does this as he's smoking he rubs his eye um, but he goes through this whole thing and everyone pretty much knows that it's uh, it's about to go down it's about to go down um, and then yeah we get that next episode. but again my favorite character in the movie Hugo Stieglitz has the best line in the goddamn movie, where he says to the Gestapo, say nah, shoot your nuts. Yeah, <laughs> say Vitazine to your boss. Or is it nuts or boss? I think he says Vitazine to your boss. And then he just puts the gun right on his dick and just fires. And then there's a lot of shooting and everyone gets shot up. The bartender and the barkeeps, uh, female barkeeps, they all get shot up. Everyone gets shot up. And then that's when the bastards come. And the guy who just had a, a baby, he's the only one alive. And then he tries to make a deal with uh, um, Brad Pitt, with Aldo, uh, that, you know, I have your, the female, what's her name? Well, I already forgot her name already. The actress. And, you know, you let, her, you let me go, I let her go. And, but, she, you know, oh, I just became a father and I had a kid and he wants to get out. But she's not happy with what happened, so she ends up killing him. So yep. now they have a problem. She's shot in the foot, and she's supposed to go to this movie premiere, and the two guys she was supposed to, or three guys she was supposed to bring, are all dead. Everyone's fucking dead. So they bring her to a vet, and they're trying to figure out what to do. And she reveals what got them all shot up was that Fassbender ordered, uh, was it three drinks? Yep. yep, like that. Rather than three drinks, which is such an odd thing, you know, to, like, pick up as the writer you know as tarantino writes this it's like oh this is how we're gonna uh, he's gonna reveal himself this is like not the european way but the english way i don't know what do you think of that that's kind of a little weird um you don't pick up on it the first time you watch it no. but when you come back they actually when he's shooting to the three that like freezes the frame yeah. on his hand yeah and, and the Gestapo guy notices, like, you kind of see his reaction when he does it. Um, so then yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I think his accent should have been the biggest tell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, I thought the same thing. It's like, um, you know, why do you sound British when you're talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's weird. And he's uh, like, he's like, this guy's from Munich. This guy's from Frankfurt. You are from where I fucking don't. No, yeah. I've never heard of yeah, where you're like from. Yeah, I've never heard of where you're from. That's how he starts to, to speculate something's off. And then the three thing kind of just, yeah. Um, so anyway, they're like, what are we going to fucking do? And Aldo and two of the other uh, bastards kind of know Italian. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So they decide that that's how they're going to play it and that they're going to cast her foot to make it look like she had gotten into a skiing accident. So they go to this premiere and uh, everyone's going to be there, even Hitler. And when they first get to the theater, there's this great shot that he does because he, he does this a lot, the, sw- the swinging shots. So it starts off with like on top of yeah. uh, the second floor and then it swoops down the stairs 
and you start to see all the players coming in. You know, you see Shoshana, and you see, like, you end up seeing uh, Archie. I mean, uh, uh, well, and then all of us, all of, um, all of Hitler's main men, and it has that in writing. Right, right. This is, this is, yeah. This is this guy, because you have to have all four, you know. This is this guy. All the main lieutenants and stuff, yeah. Or whatever they are, generals. So then we see, uh, of course, Christoph Waltz is there, and then she's, he starts talking to, what do I keep forgetting her name? The uh, actress, Hammersmark. Hammersmark. And Bridget. She's got to tell her her story that she broke her foot skiing, and then he fucking laughs his it. ass off. Yeah, like almost like uncharacteristically laughs his ass off. And Pitt and the other two doing their best Italian impressions. Bongiorno. Like, Bongiorno. That was great. Yeah, that's exactly. That's like the funniest part of the of the uh, movie. Um, so, yeah. So then they have to pretend. And then, of course, it turns out Christoph Waltz speaks, uh, speaks Italian. Italian as well. Very like well. Very well. It's motherfucker. Like, you can do anything, everything. Um, so then he he's like... I want to talk to Hammerschmidt by herself. And then the three guys are just standing there like morons, just waiting. And then that's when we find out that, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Lando. Yeah, he Cinderella, that bitch. Yeah. All right. So he finds out, he knows that she's a double agent. Yeah. He could have just, he, he could have just shown her the letter with her lipstick on it. Yeah. He finds. Or the, the autograph. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so he finds these things at the bar. He finds the shoe, and he finds the autograph that she had given to the guy who she eventually shoots. Uh, and then so the, it fits her. Then he realizes that she's um, the mole or the double agent. And then she just, he goes and chokes her. Now, I have a question about this. Uh, again, I'm going to say it later on. Because he is not happy with her, no. uh, to say the least. And uh, fun fact... The hands around her neck while he's choking her were actually Quentin Tarantino's hands. No. And he choked her in real life. He choked her so bad that she did. She was pretty close to to dying. So a lot of that choking was real. So her expression was pretty real. Um, but so he kills her. And uh, eventually, what is. Help me out with the holes in my memory. So he, so they, so everyone goes into the theater to watch this, this movie, and Na- Nation's Pride sounds like a goddamn. Well, Nazi first, movie. first he calls and he gets, he gets Pitt out of there. He says, "White dinner right. jacket." Right. Grab him. And then the other two. And the then we two follow the left. two lackeys. All right, they, Eli Roth and the other guy. They've already lost. Oh, you know what the. These two were also in that amazing Shitproof. movie, Death Proof. Yeah, um, Death Proof helps you fall asleep 100% all the time. Huh. Just made that up. Um, it's a sleeping aid. Did you know that Death Proof was a sleeping aid? So you have Eli Roth. It's a laxative. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a laxative. And the other uh, bastard, his real name. You ready for this? His real name is Omar Doom, which, nice. which is actually his stage, but it's a great stage name nonetheless. So we see them, and they go end up going into the private booth, I guess you can call it, where Hitler is. And meanwhile, one thing I didn't mention was that uh, Shoshana is going to plan to uh, set the entire theater on fire while we're, they're watching the movie. I'm going to use, and yeah, you're right. Samuel L. Jackson comes in again with mm-hmm. his voiceover telling us that certain kind of film burns faster yeah, the than, nitrate. than normal film or other film. And so um, now do you think that, I mean, here's the thing. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when they do set the theater on fire, they could have escaped. Like Shoshana and him could have yeah, escaped. Yeah, they have guns. They have fully automatic weapons that can easily shoot through wooden doors. I mean, you know, if like anything. The, and the black... did you notice that when, when Marcel was going through and putting so, locks, the bars, yeah, yeah. that he was putting them on in the inside? Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's why that's my point is I think that they had already just planned on dying. I'm like, why? You could have escaped. Yeah. Because he goes outside and then unlocks the door, then locks the door when he comes back inside. Yeah. Like, why not get some chains and some locks and just lock up the outside? Yeah. Um, but in any event, uh, we get our uh, lovesick puppy, Frederick, goes mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, once again, tell Shoshana how much he loves her. And uh, she's... He gets not... a little rapey. Yes. See, that now I had felt bad for Frederick up to this point, <laughs> obviously. Um, then it's just like, what a douche. And then, um, yeah, it gets pretty bad. And she ends up shooting him. Just when in his movie, he's like getting, uh, you know, rounds of applause and stuff for the things that he's doing in Nation's Pride. Uh, which, by the way, I think was that because that's like a movie within a movie because they actually do show scenes of it. I think that was directed by Eli Roth. That whole thing. Yeah, but did you watch that whole thing? No, I've never seen it. I no. have the I have the DVD. Yeah, and I actually went upstairs and searched through all my DVDs because I knew I had it somewhere. Yeah, and a bonus feature does have the full yeah. feature. Yeah, because they filmed the whole thing. I know they filmed the whole yeah. thing. So I watched that. But no, I never did. It's only um, like 15, 20 minutes long. It's not very long. Right. Um, so, where are the facilities? So, yeah, you're right. Um, Pit and one of the Oh, other... and they, they take care of um, the explanation of that bell tower, by the way. Because the whole time in the movie, you're thinking up like, well, we have tanks and we have rockets. Why don't they just yeah. blow the fuck out of that bell tower? So, the American general, our lieutenant or whoever's on the ground is like that's a thousand year old structure and we're not gonna just blow up history because of one guy that's like nah right yeah yeah i don't know well well maybe it's because you know it's a nazi propaganda movie so maybe they wanted to show the uh americans being stupid i guess yeah um but um so then we see the brad pitt and uh, the, one of the other ambassadors, BJ Novak, is taken prisoner, and we already we do get this right. Okay, so this is where uh, was Landa gives his he like his plan, right? So he's going to defect and be a spy for the Americans. Now, this is what I don't understand. You explain this to me, which I'm sure you can. Why does he get so fucking upset yeah. at Hendershmidt, whatever the hell his name is? Meanwhile, a scene or two later, he then says, I'm going to defect. All right, that's a hole. And then here's another hole. So in the very opening scene, and I agree with you, that's, that's um, yeah, that sucks. Uh, that doesn't make sense. It's a hole. It's a hole in the plot. Now, in the very first scene, he explains his nickname. Um, his moniker, the fucking Jew hunter. Yeah. And in the opening scene, he talks about how much he appreciates it and how much he likes it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in this scene, he's talking about basically how he doesn't appreciate fucking monikers and nicknames. And then he calls, like like you, they call you the little man. The little man, yeah. He's like, I didn't realize. He's like, he didn't so that's, why. that's one thing I thought yeah. was a whole too, is that in the in the beginning, he talks about how great his Jew hunter name is. And then he, he, yeah. And then we're definitely backtracking in this scene. Yeah. So I have two theories. I, have, I mean, I have a theory for each issue. Uh, so the one reason why he's mad at uh, Hammerstein, I mean, Hammersmark, is that she's a woman. Okay. And that might be a reason why he just gets so you know, resentful towards her. Uh, and then also her act killed German soldiers. So maybe that's a part of it. And then the reason why he then says, yeah, I mean, cause that's been up to, you know, up of, uh, for debate between my wife and I, it's like, why does he at one point say he loves it? And then he doesn't. A part of me thinks that, well, my theory is, is that he just said that in the beginning, just to kind of make himself look good. You know, be like, hey, I'm the Jew hunter. 
I'm good at it. So therefore, I love the um, the name, you know. But then the reality is, he doesn't like it. Or, I mean, the first the first part of the movie is like 1941, and this is like three or four years later. Yeah. Maybe he just grew out of love for it. So R R he is just playing into whatever character. Right. He's talking to. Right. I I did. I think I did think that or say that at one point that he's just adapting to whatever plan he's going with in his head. Um, but he, he says he, he knows that the two bastards have dynamite and they're going to set him off, but, uh, you know, that he'll let them go if he can get safe passage to America. And the problem with that is, so if these dynamites kill the leader of the Nazi regime, why do we need you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in any event, he calls Brad Pitt's superior, who is played by Harvey Keitel, voice only, and uh, they make a deal. Now, then we see the movie theater, and during the screening, Frederick kind of slips away to the projection room, and he forces himself uh, on... He attempts to... Afford, because, again, he's, like, trying to, like, be romantic, and it doesn't work, and so then she he like pushes himself and she then to get him out pretends to be into it and then that's when she pulls a, a pistol a, sh a gun and shoots him and then he ends up shooting her and yep. they both die which again is like you know it's i heard this once that they were referred to as romeo and juliet so what's crazy okay i gotta ignore you i gotta not ignore you i gotta interrupt you um this is the one time she felt sorry for him. Right. And she goes True. over and checks on him. True. You know what I mean? Like she really did. You can, um, you're can. you like, oh, maybe she did like him a little bit, you know? Like she right. goes over and like, oh, she, you can see it on her face. Like, oh, shit, what did I do? And then he tells her. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So Romeo and Juliet, where'd you, where have you heard that? I don't remember. I can't freaking remember, but I once heard heard them be referred to as that, or at least some sort of, you know, variation of Romeo and Juliet, or like, could you know, because again, like, if things were different, they probably would have been romantically involved. And so I think that's, that's kind of where that whole, um, you know, the murdering each other okay. kind of comes into play. Um, but anyway, so that happens. And then uh, we see, you know, the two bastards, Eli Roth and Omar Doom, they finally get to uh, where Hitler is. So as the movie that they're watching reaches the climax, uh, Shoshana then shows up on screen and tells the audience in English that they're about to be killed by a Jew. And then that's when Marcel uh, lights the the film behind with a cigarette the because we know because of movies that everything flammable will go up if you flick a cigarette, <laughs> cigarette into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure that was been busted on Mythbusters at some point. Um also her face is supposed is like emulates on the smoke as the fire starts. And I think I read somewhere that that was like a reference to Wizard of Oz. Um but uh anyway that starts to happen, and then the two bastards break in, and they start shooting up the booth. So, like, all the lieutenants and generals are getting shot up. And then Eli Roth's amazing acting comes into play, where he shoots Hitler. And it's just this long scene of just him shooting Hitler, and the look on his face is just like, all right, calm down. You got him, bro. You got him. Like, just shooting and shooting, and just the intense look on his face, like, the whole time he's shooting. And then they're, they're, uh, they're, uh, what's it called? They're, um, their anklet bracelets made out of, uh, dynamite go off. And it's like, why didn't you just take them off? I mean, they were, they, oh, we're just supposed to assume that all three of them, you know, Brad Pitt included, were looking to die? Like, yep. was this a suicide mission? Yes. So, it's a suicide mission for everybody. So, everyone everybody. dies. Yeah, everyone dies. The whole fucking uh, building blows up and, um, you know, kills everyone. And Hitler's dead. And, of course, this is where Tarantino starts his whole 
I'm going to change history uh, by doing this. And, and I, I didn't really mind it. What did you think? Like, it didn't really bother me. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, it's a cool what if type of yeah type of thing. Yeah, it is like a cool what if. Um, so then we go back to uh, Landa, and he's making the deal with uh, what's his name, Brad Pitt. Yeah, Harvey. Harvey. So the he's he him and the radio operator drive the two into Allied territory, where they then surrender. And they're in the woods, and, you know, he gives Pitt back his giant fucking Bowie knife. And that's when Brad Pitt shoots the radio operator. And then he, you know, points the gun at, at uh, Aldo. And once and again, Brad, know, Brad Pitt's dialogue is just awesome. I've been chewed out before. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, you, you just shot him. Like, yeah. we just made a deal. Made he said, nah, deal. they made a deal with you. They don't give a shit about him. <laughs> I do love your uh, <laughs> your impersonation. Uh, and he's like, I've been I've been chewed out before. Yeah. Fuck it. Nah, I won't be in trouble. I'll be chewed out. Yeah. Um. So then he uh he you know and again his his mentality about giving them the scars. So he gives this this great little speech that you know the war will be over. <laughs> You'll you'll get a comfortable life in America, and you deserve that. And you're yeah, you deserve. He'd you make played, that deal. He said, yeah, "I'd make played, that deal." I made that deal. You played the game. It's cool, uh, but you know, everyone should know who you are and what you are, and you shouldn't get to completely hide from that. So I love that. You know, it's just like. You know, these, these Nazis, they did whatever they did, and, and even if they weren't proud of it, they still did it, and they should have something to remember that by, and they should have that for everyone to remember that by. So then he starts cutting the uh, the Nazi, the, the uh, swastika. swastika. Yeah, and they and really show it this yeah, time. Yeah, that's a great fucking great scene. Like, you're, he's just cutting in some meat. It's a... Yeah, he's screaming. He's, like, grabbing the grass and, like, pulling up the grass, and he's screaming bloody murder. Uh, and then, of course, again, one of the best lines in the movie, B.J. Novak says, uh, you know, that, oh, you, you, great job, it's, you know. It's your masterpiece. It's, it's like, yeah, this might be my masterpiece. I remember seeing this in the theater and turning over and looking at my wife and I'm like, this, this is a masterpiece. Like, this is such a great movie. And then it ends. So I have one question for you. Okay. Now, I didn't understand this uh, because we're not really told. Where are the rest of the bastards? Oh, yeah. I don't know. At the veterinarian clinic? Because when we were at the scene where they're across the street from the bar, you yep. know, and you were saying that Pitt was talking about why would she pick this place, not all the bastards are there. So I think maybe some have died. That's what I thought. I originally thought that, you know, we're seeing, we don't see everything, that we just see that some of them are left. And I always said I would have liked to have seen the scenes where they died. But I recently heard not that long ago that they didn't in fact die. That they were all in another location waiting for the rest of them for all this to play out. But I just feel like that could have been more clarified. Yeah, I don't know why they'd been waiting on them if it was a suicide mission to begin with. Right. I mean, the only thing I could think of is that they didn't need the whole group. And maybe they were holding something. I think it's more believable that they died because when the scene when we're um, – when we see the – when we're really introduced to them fighting and we see the Bear Jew and Stiglitz for the first time, that yeah. scene, yeah. that whole area is littered with dead bodies. Yeah. Like they just got through a fight, you know what I mean, like a serious firefight. Yeah. And they don't show any of that. No. So no, they don't. that would lead us to believe that these guys are, you know what I mean? They're like guerrilla fighters. They are in battle. So people do get shot and people do die, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, like I said, I don't think it's ever specifically said. Um, and yeah, you would think that some of them would die. But I think you're also supposed to believe that they're so good at what they do and they, they do it in a guerrilla style uh, that they, um, 
that they don't die. Yep. Um, but uh, I don't know, you know, uh, so I'm reading this, I'm reading this, uh, and it says that, so one of the actors, Sam Levine, plays one of the bastards, and he was famous for being in a movie, uh, TV show, Freaks and Geeks. And he said in an article that his, his role was much bigger. And it says that his character does survive the story's end. Uh, written but not filmed closing scenes had himself and other unspecific bastards meeting up with Lieutenant uh, Aldo and the other one after they settled things with Colonel Landa. So that's what I mean. Like, I think we're supposed to, I don't know if we're supposed to believe it, but I don't think they're dead. But we're never told that. It just seems incomplete not telling us that. So it would just be him and then the kid from the with the big nose from Beth Cooper. I love you, Beth Cooper, or whatever, that kid. Yeah. It would only yeah. You're uh, just right. be it the would've... two of them, I think, right? Um I think you might be right. Are the, Donnie... those two and then the third person from um Death Proof. Yeah. Um it might be more than that. It might be I'm looking at the names. And it might actually be like three or four of them. If I had to guess, I'd say three or four of them. But still, I mean, they're somewhere else, but we're just never told that. So I guess it was a scene that was filmed and just cut. Yeah. So I'm surprised Tarantino cut anything. Um, but yeah, any, any other... So you had said before we recorded that, you know, we both didn't really know too much of the connections of the other movies. Yep. Um, but I will say that... Uh, Donnie, uh, the bear Jew, he's related to a character from True Romance. Okay. Um, so, you know, the movie producer, the one that, uh, you know, that they try to sell the Coke to. Yep. And there's that whole Mexican standoff. Donnie is his father, the, the film producer's father. But other than that, I don't really know. I tried to look it up, but didn't really get too many... Uh, there's a uh, no that was in Kill Bill. I was gonna say I know in one of these there's a Christoph Waltz, but that's the Stoltz connection from Kill Bill is what that was, and that's from Django, not from this movie. Um, what you thought? I mean, I'll tell you right off the bat. Uh, this is like uh, yeah, this is on the top for me. Okay. I mean, I think this is one and uh, Pulp Fiction's two. Yeah, I'm going to go one, one Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill two, Kill Bill one. Are we just calling Kill Bill, Kill Bill? No, I mean, it's up to you. It's your list. You can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, Kill Bill two, Kill Bill one, um, Jackie Brown, then Shit Show on Wheels. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Inglorious Bastards probably. Oh, I, I, I left out Reservoir Dogs, so I put that oh, yeah. before um, Jackie Brown. Yeah, right before Jackie Brown. Yeah, so yeah, we're going. I'm going with uh, Glorious Bastards, Pulp Fiction, Kibble Two, Two, Kibble One. Yeah, and the rest. Um, so we still have some good ones to go, man. We've got. Django. We've got Django, then we've got Hateful Eight, and then we've got um, Once Upon a Time in Tom, Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah, two more left. Not bad. Guys, um, we are running to an end of our Quentin Tarantino movie, so give us some suggestions of movies yeah. that you'd like us to go over. Yeah, that's a good idea. You um, know, directors or actors or movies and groups, yeah, movies, the collections. Yeah, yeah collections. We have a lot, you know, we've talked about Christopher Nolan, we've talked about MCU. Yep. Uh, there's there's a lot of different options. Uh, I mean, as long as you don't pick an actor or a director who's done 200 movies, you know, like we, we can't, like Samuel L. Jackson we just yeah. been doing this forever. Um, yeah, I guess probably not actors. Well, unless they do... Because if we did like Tom Hanks, then we'd have to watch all Spielberg, all... Right. Ron Howard, right. Zemeckis. Yeah. Um, but you could do, like, if you did all Indiana Jones movies or... Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like you said, we are at the end. We'll definitely... We're getting there. Do... Three movies. Yep. We'll do uh, Django Unchained, his love letter to Italian uh, westerns. Uh, he does a lot of love letters. 
Yes. Which is, which is, you know, I mean, it's good. Um, it's interesting. This one, it was like he wrote one to himself. I felt like with doing um, the chapters and then a lot of his shots. So there was the one shot that you were talking about where he's circling through and looking at the, the not the auditorium, but like the full the uh, foyer yeah. in the in the cinema. Yeah. But then there's another one within the cinema too, where she's walking around planning shit. Uh, Shoshana mm-hmm. is, and they show an overhead view, and you see like the actual like floor plan layout, kind of. Yeah. Like that's one of his big, big shots. That's he he always he does shit like that in every movie. Yeah. But I feel like this was kind of a callback, like I'm saying, to like um, Kill Bill, as far as the chapters and. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's he. Yeah, he does it a lot. Like, this movie wasn't out of chronological order like he likes to do. Yeah. But it was uh, chapters. Um, I mean, that should, those things like that had just become his calling card, uh, what he's known for. Uh, and the feet. There's feet shots in this, too. So, yeah. And then the whole Cinderella shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of movie references and, and like you said references you wouldn't even think of like cinderella uh, but yeah like you said that's uh, that's the end of it so thank you for watching oh and germans climbing mountains there you go oh yeah yeah because in our next movie that's um what his helga or whatever her name is his yeah. wife's name yep uh so Thank you for watching this live. If you're watching it live, this will be on YouTube later on. If you're watching, if you're listening on uh, Anchor, thank you as well. And this was live, so you missed it live. But um, what else? Uh, like, subscribe, and comment, and hit the little thumb thing. Oh, the bell. Hit the bell. That's that's what it was. Um, Email us at gamersfrontry7 at uh, gmail.com. Any questions, any suggestions, and shit like that. Um, am I missing anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. Your book. Oh, my book. I wrote a book. Champ. Yep. Misanthrope of the Year. That's on Amazon. Just uh, Google Eric Champ. Amazon usually comes up. Uh, join our Facebook. Join our Discord. Discord. Join our uh, Patreon. We do have some competitions going on right now, guys. If you're into anime, um, there's a... Yep, just today. The head protagonist of your favorite anime. So generally, the winner, um, Dre usually gives 50 or more dollars in game codes. Yeah, codes for just money. So come, come check us out on Facebook and get in some of these competitions with us. Yes. Um, as I always say with the Patreon, help us help you, uh, and things like that. And I think we're, that's it, right? Yep. Uh, so this has been Nick and the Hick, and I have been the Nick, and you. I am the Hick, au revoir. <laughs> Night. <laughs>